So I start with an overview of the software. Then uh, I'll talk about this uh, GXS system. And finally, uh, explain to you how you can uh, use it to create decentralized applications. And it's more a call of uh, help for developers because we really need de developers in our team. So uh, RetroShare is a authenticated links. For this, we use uh, TLS. And we use a TLS over TCP, UDP, but also over TOR, uh, optionally, and I2P. Um, so, on top of this, we have implemented a few services that allow to distribute some, some data. The first of which is uh, file transfer, so it's uh, anonymous end-to-end -end encrypted file transfer with swarming capabilities. An email system that is uh, completely asynchronous. Distributed chat that works uh, pretty much like IRC. Forums and channels which uh, allow um, users to distribute authenticated data uh, while allowing an anonymous uh, users to comment on, uh, on the post. So uh, RetroShare is available on uh, macOS, Linux, uh, Windows. Uh, it's also about to be available on Android. We have a, a prototype for now. The project is about 10 years old now. Um, GXS was mainly designed by Dr. Bob, uh, Chris, and myself. Um, we don't have many users. It's hard to estimate exactly how many, but we estimate it to be some thousands uh, simultaneous users, which we explain by the fact that it's quite difficult to bootstrap. When you install the software, you have to connect to someone. Right? You, if you're alone, <laughs> you won't see any data. So either you convince your friend to use it or you uh, join an existing network. But once you're done, you belong to a perfectly decentralized, uh, reasonably secure, uh, confidential network. So it's uh, all implemented in C++. Uh, it depends on standard libraries. And uh, we have a graphical user interface in, uh, in Qt. And all these systems, uh, channel, forums, email, they're all based on the same uh, abstract distribution system, which is the, the subject of this uh, presentation. So what is the, the problem? Um, we have a mesh of uh, computers which only talk to their neighbors. And we want to distribute data uh, beyond friends. Right? And we want to do that while favoring interesting content, preferably, but also preventing flooding attacks, uh, spams, and provide some guarantee of uh, authentication or anonymity, depending on the kind of, uh, of usage. And finally, the network does not look like this nice uh, graph. It looks more like something like this. So that's a snapshot of what I can see from my own node. And, um, as you can see, some people have a lot of friends, some don't, and also these connections that they, they might not be uh, that working at the time of exchanging data. So we need to be robust to all these uh, all these problems. So we designed this uh, generic exchange system, which stands for GXS, and uh, it takes care of the uh, distribution, authentication, privacy, and security of the data. And it's based on two principles. The first one is that subscribers advertise to friends. That means um, when you want to um, access some data, you would subscribe to it. Then you get the data from your friends. And once you're subscribed, you make your friends aware that this data exists and they can subscribe, etc. cetera. Um, the second principle is that the nodes in the network, they all participate to data integrity and uh, spam control, flooding control, etc. And on top of this, uh, the services are implemented. So at the core of GXS, you have uh, three blocks. Uh, one is the encrypted uh, storage, for which we use uh, SQL Cipher. Uh, a network synchronization uh, component, which accounts for who is able or who is, has the right to see which data. Uh, it's based on a, some kind of multi-chain transaction system. 
and um, the, the last block, the third block, is the validation, which uh, checks the signatures of all the data and uh, passes the data to France when it has been uh, verified, validated. So from that, specific service implements their own private data types. For instance, if you implement forums, you would have like forum message in your uh, private data types or the, maybe the name of the forum. Um, they also define what should be the, uh, uh, the synchronization and authentication policies for the service, depending on the kind of service you, you want to implement. This can vary quite a lot. And also implement specific actions. For instance, for the distributed uh, or asynchronous email system, uh, the email service has to take care of um, uh, removing messages when uh, um, a return receipt has been uh, received, etc. So that works uh, as uh, I will describe now. We have these uh, five things, services, groups, message, identities, and cycles. So services, for instance, a forum is a service that would explain it. Um, <coughs> Service distribute two things, groups and messages, which are hierarchical um, uh, objects. Right? And they differ by the following. Groups have their own distribution of an authentication policies. So the distribution means who will see that data. And the authentication means whether the messages in this forum uh, or in this um, service uh, has to be signed or not by, by their users or by their author, sorry. So the signatures, they are provided by identities which follow uh, the groups where they are used. And that can be grouped into cycles which in turn are used to uh, um, handle the distribution of, uh, of data or to, to limit the distribution of the data. So, for instance, uh, I was talking about forums. If you uh, <coughs> want to see what it is for forums, then uh, each forum is a group. And um, uh, the message in the forum will be GXS messages. And then uh, the cycles will decide who is able to uh, see that forum and to, uh, to post into, into that forum. If we go deeper, so the <laughs> I won't detail this, but uh, groups and messages, basically they have two, two parts, the um, metadata and the, the private data. So the metadata is what GXS uses for the synchronization. You can see, for instance, in uh, the group metadata, the cycle ID, which is uh, what limits the visibility of it. And um, the private data is what the service will use for the specific application that, that, you, that you have designed. As I said, identities um, follow the, the groups. Um, they are synchronized on request, and actually they are handled by a GXS service. So it, it might become a bit complicated at some point, but uh, this allows us to benefit from a lot of the existing infrastructure in GXS to synchronize the, the identities. As you can see here, they can be optionally signed by uh, a node key, uh, which allows this identity to be connected to someone for in, uh, in real life in the network. But this is optional. Some identities might otherwise be anonymous. And then uh, there is no way to, to trace, the, trace them back to their uh, hosting node. Cycles are also distributed by a G GXS service. Um, but no, their subscription and synchronization is, uh, is automatic. And what's, uh, the system works the following way. To, to be a member of a cycle, you need two things. You, be, you need to be in the list of people that are invited to the cycle. So this is controlled by the author of the cycle group, which, is, uh, which acts as uh, an administrator of this group. And you need also to have requested membership to this uh, cycle. So this. Uh, uh, Double check system uh, allows the administrator of the cycle to uh, control the, the members, but also it allows each member to leave the cycle and nobody can, um, can force someone to be in a cycle and, for instance, use that, that, that cycle to distribute unwanted data over the network. Also, an interesting 
uh, bit here is that cycle being groups in a GXS service, they can be restricted to a cycle themselves, including the same cycle. And if you do that, you obtain a self-restricted cycle, which will be only visible to the people that belong to this cycle. So it allows us to distribute data in a very confidential way throughout the network. Uh, authentication works the following way. So they are uh, in, in groups and GXS messages, you, they, they come with signatures. Uh, groups have their admin signature, of course, which, which controls everything. And they optionally have an author signature, but you, the group can be anonymous. Uh, GXS messages uh, have an author signature as well, if it's required by the group uh, authentication policy. But they might also uh, require a published sign signature, which will be able to control that some users have right access to some groups. So all these signatures are, are checked uh, by every user in the network when distributing the data. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. What about uh, synchronization? Uh, so it works on a, using a cascade algorithm, uh, which basically uh, does the following thing. So each peer acting as a client here will uh, broadcast to his friend the last time stamp, the last timestamp of that friend's data, which was previously sent by the friend to uh, to the client. Right. So, so that doing so, we only compare the times that have been issued from that machine. We never compare times between different machines. If this uh, server realizes that his data is new, then he will send the list of new groups here with the published timestamp of each group to which the client will ask uh, the list of groups he wants to get an update of and then get the group data. It's pretty much the same for messages, so I won't detail it. Uh, the only um, uh, thing I want to add here is that some of these transactions are actually encrypted uh, to be able to uh, limit the visibility of the data and the ac accessibility of the data to the persons that are actually in the cycle of uh, identities that are allowed to access it. So, uh, <laughs> we had to add the reputation management system. Uh, when you design a uh, a system like this, you get trolls, uh, and we got big trolls. So <laughs> we we had to, to do that, and actually it, it's it's quite efficient. Um, there is a chicken and egg problem here because you want the the newcomers to be able to post some data and to to bootstrap that data, but you also want to prevent uh, nasty users to create new identities to post new data, right? And because the network is static, uh, it's possible to actually find a good compromise uh, between, between these two. Um, so what we do is we only forward, we always receive the data, we only forward if the identity has a, a reputation a score that, that is larger than what has been uh, defined for, for the this group of a specific service. And uh, that reputation score it is computed by uh, uh, mixing your own opinion about an identity with the opinion of your friend nodes around. Okay? And that allows to, uh, to, to block spam very efficiently without the need to validate everybody in the network on every node. Finally, uh, what about file transfer? So uh, we cannot distribute files in GXS messages, it would be uh, too much because uh, of the redundancy of data through the network. And so we designed a um, um, system that is uh, based on the turtle friend-to-friend uh, -friend system. Uh, it's uh, anonymous end-to-end uh, -end encrypted um, uh, tunnels that, um, well, I, I won't detail the encryption there, but uh, in the question, if you want more information, I can give. So what do we do with that? Um, well, the question is how much does it take to implement a service? For instance, suppose you want to implement forums, which we did. Um, how much code does it, does it take? The answer is like 200 lines of code plus the graphical user interface. I'm not cheating. 
<laughs> so here, for instance, you would need to uh, create your uh, forum service, which uh, derives actually from the GXS service. It's a base class. And you pass to this service the authentication policy, which here means that uh, root messages uh, are signed or required to be signed by the author, and child uh, messages are also required to be signed. Why do we separate the two? Because that allows you, for instance, to uh, create services where the messages need to be signed, but you can have anonymous comments on each of the posts. Okay? Then, what about the forum message? I want to post a forum message. Then, that's the actual class. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I haven't removed anything. Um, it um, <coughs> it just derives from an existing uh, GXS message object. Uh, it provides a serialization process, which is quite compact. And this is the message uh, that you post in the forum. That's all. So when you want to post the message, uh, the operation is uh, instantiate that class. But uh, for forums, we, we did one already, so you can see that it shows quite a, a large amount of information. Um, I won't detail it, but uh, I um, ask you to try the software. So what do we want to do with that? I think that it's possible to use the same principle to develop at least these things. So I just dump what I had in memory. This, uh, Three we have started already, but uh, we would really make good use of uh, developers to uh, to create them. Ultimately, our target is this uh, Facebook-style uh, decentralized um, social network where we would like have some wall system where people can post uh, uh, their ideas, whatever, and other users could comment. Um, so it's quite possible to do, it, do this using groups, subgroups, and GXS messages. So I'm done. Uh, so it leaves me like five minutes for questions. You will find a lot of information here. I would like to thank uh, freifunk.net for financing my come here. Thank you. <laughs> And this is, this is Joe, so we have, if we have questions, we will share, probably, depending. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, thank you for the, for the RetroShare projects. I, I've known about it for quite some time. But I hear you um, talking about identities. Uh, how many identities can a person have? There's no limit. There's no limit, no. so you can have multiple identities yeah. and multiple groups. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> That's the problem we had with spam, actually. <laughs> Sorry, what? That's the problem we had with, with spam, because spammers would like, create new identities every yeah. post. And, uh... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I had a quick question, because you mentioned that part of the goals for RetroShare is uh, to have uh, to, profit, uh, to protect its users' privacy, but at the same time, like the network entirely relies on friends-to-friends -friends connection, meaning that I actually show the entire network who my friends are, and like, is there anything done to protect that information and to also prevent my friends from seeing like who other people I communicate with? Okay, so. There's uh, actually there's a wide spectrum of, of users and usage and usages. So we had to to um, uh, to offer different compromise to users. So uh, if you want the, the most visible uh, network is when you uh, you enable the discovery system, which uh, advertise to your friends your own friends uh, if they might want to make friends with them, right? But you can disable that. So if you disable that, uh, your friends will not see whatever is beyond your own node. Then you might also want to hide your IP address from your own friend because you have a connection to them so they can see it. If you want to do so, then you can use a hidden node which works over Tor and then 
you only see connections to localhost, uh, the localhost proxy thing, and you, your friends don't even know where you are and who you are. Okay. There was a question. You still want a question? So um, you mentioned that you, at some point you got trolls or spammers, and I'm kind of interested at the, the story of that. At which point when you develop these kind of tools, do you, uh, do you understand uh, who that was or uh, was there a specific point where things changed? <laughs> we don't know who it was, but when you get, you get spammed with messages that become uh, aggressive or you know, sometimes very offending for the sake of like, polluting the data, you have to do something always. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's a shame that we have to do that, but we have to. And about that, it's like the, the system, the, the control over content is so distributed, so everyone decide, so everyone decide what content is appropriate for them or not. So it's like, actually, it's a system that doesn't need police, because everyone is, is taking care of the control of the, of the um, content that is now this is distributing. Yes, what he's saying is that there's no way you can ban someone from the entire network. You will just not see the guy anymore and not forward his data to your friends. That's all. So you mentioned there's a, um, one of the large areas of outstanding work has to do with the UI. And I imagine a good chunk of that half a million codes of the project is, is going to be um, user interface. Have you considered, um, given that there are plenty of open source projects for mail clients and forum clients and this stuff, um, like to expose, you know, IMAP or NNTP uh, protocols and let the user use one of the existing clients? Uh, yes, but then you would need to connect somehow to the clear net, right? And we don't do that, so. I mean, th there were some, some uh, experiments where there were some experiments where uh, someone implemented some kind of, uh, of gateway to forward real email into a retrochere email system. Uh, so that, that is possible as well, but uh, it, it's really a, a prototype. It's not in the main application. Thank you. Uh, thank you for making and sharing the brochure. Um, I just have a very quick question. Um, I just installed it on my Mac here, and um, I think your uh, target audience are people who care about anonymity, et cetera, and security a little bit. Um, I just realized that the app itself doesn't have a code signature, and it still tries to connect to places like displaymyip.com, et cetera. Yeah. And so the app could be changed. Um, have you considered uh, putting it on the App Store and having it sandboxed? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, cool. I mean, that would make me like feel better about sure. downloading it. I mean, I checked your SHA sums and whatever, but it's okay, so still. Uh, about, um, s yeah, we provide signed uh, builds, of course, uh, in particular that uh, GitHub does not allow us to have uh, a HTTPS uh, connection to their website, so uh, we have to, to sign our builds. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all. <laughs> but if if you know someone that would uh, volunteer to package it, uh, set box it on, on Mac, is we, we would help. Time is up. Thanks, everyone.